and he does his protocol. So I uh, once a month drive down there and get Avastin, mm -hmm. continue to get Avastin. And then he opened his clinic, Dr. Moon opened his clinic here in Cabo, which was two months after we had gone back, come back to the States. And so we are continuing then to come to Cabo uh, once a month and then go to, to Florida once a month. What were your levels of uh, CA-125 in November? In November, uh, I'm not quite sure what they were in November, but I believe, uh, oh, they were, in the, they were in the 40s. They were in the 40s. Uh -huh. And then they continued to go down, and then Dr. Moon did a blood, his blood test that he sends to Houston, and it was 12. And it was 12? It was 12. When was that? That was three months ago. Okay. Yes, excellent. I made the comment uh, to one of the patients earlier. I said it is amazing how close you can get to the nurses and to the doctors when you don't even speak the same language. Uh, there's one nurse that y'all have in particular, Coyote, and it's, she's just like, my, she's my daughter almost. I don't know if she thinks of me as her <laughs> mother, but, <laughs> but we, we seem to really care about one another. Okay. And uh, she speaks very, very little English, and I don't speak very much Spanish. <laughs> I would suggest to get in touch with Dr. Moon as soon as possible. With anything, the sooner that you can get, start getting treatment, the easier it is to treat. Unfortunately, most people don't hear about Dr. Moon until they're stage four or till it's, you know, till it's almost too late, but he has still been able to, to, uh, to help even, even, even those that, that, are, that are that bad off. But the sooner that you can start treatment, the better you are. Would I say Dr. Moon is a lifesaver? Uh, I'm alive. <laughs> I'm alive, and there are several people who feel that I would not be here right now if it was not for Dr. Moon, including me. Including you. Yes. In um, November of 2005, I was diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, um, and it ultimately ended to be a late stage breast cancer because it had gone undetected, even though I had regular mammograms and ultrasounds for three years. So at at that point, I had significant lymph node involvement, and I sought treatment in uh, Texas, uh, in the United States, uh, from some very reputable doctors, and uh, went through a traditional uh, surgery and chemotherapy regime. Well, they were um, certain that uh, it was a reoccurrence of breast cancer uh, that had metastasized into my spinal area. And it's um, unbeknownst to me that is fairly normal with late stage breast cancers is in about 75% of the cases, there will be bone metastasis. Okay. So I argued with them and we had a series of tests done and uh, the uh, scans and MRIs confirmed that there wasn't just one place there were actually three tumors in my spinal area. Well, I started to look uh, at different alternatives because I had um, begun to distrust the oncology uh, physicians in the United States. And uh, I felt like they were rather primitive in their approach. and. But I sought out further options and went to a very well-renowned national cancer center. Uh, they told me I might qualify for a clinical trial, but that there really wasn't anything they could offer me. So I started to investigate different alternatives. And luckily, I was uh, put in touch with a patient. I think I was put in touch by God. Mm -hmm. uh, with a patient that had actually sought treatment from Dr. Wu Chul Moon. I started to receive treatment in Korea with about 13 other patients that uh, we all stay in the same luxury hotel together and we were all escorted to the uh, Korean clinic together. So we made great friends and um, I had a very successful experience there. When I came back to the United States after my stay in Korea, actually my American doctors were amazed 
because all three tumors were gone. They started to get a little suspicious, mm -hmm. uh, and, but they told me I was cured. Dr. Moon was insistent on keeping me on uh, a series of medications for at least a year. He did not believe I was cured because he felt that I still had too much cancer in my blood. And uh, most American oncologists do not look at the blood the way Dr. Moon does. So there was a disagreement with the American oncologist and uh, one of them arbitrarily took me off of one of my maintenance drugs. Okay, what happened next? Well, uh, within 60 days of that, my cancer returned and it was not uh, the way it had been, it was three times as bad. My tumor markers went to levels that they had never been, and um, I was not even told that uh, by my American oncologist until I was three months down the road. So at that point, I had seven new bone cancers, and I had to go back to Korea to start over again. Um, I stayed in Korea that time uh, about a month and uh, then fortunately uh, the Cabo Clinic was open so I was able then to continue my treatment with Dr. Moon in um, Cabo San Lucas or Cabo San Jose at Clinica de la Vita which has become a wonderful place for healing and much easier to navigate than Seoul, Korea. My condition, my tumor markers have decreased. Um, they are not normal yet, but they are on their way to normal. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I have found a new American oncologist that is willing to follow Dr. Moon's protocol and give me the maintenance medications that I need so that I will once again uh, be in remission. I think it's a wonderful experience. I became very close to many of the patients in Korea, and we all feel that the clinic in Mexico is wonderful for uh, Western and U.S. citizens because it's convenient, it's safe, um, and we've enjoyed Dr. Sir to you and your staff immensely, and it's added a whole new level of healing and confidence and ease in getting four stage cancer treatment. That's great. Unequivocally. I will, I will tell you that I am an attorney. I am trained to look at the negative and find fault. And I have looked at Dr. Moon, watched him, researched this, and I have seen remarkable results with the treatment protocol with many patients. The patients that have been coming are primarily four stage cancer patients. I would suggest that any cancer patient come to Dr. Moon um, to avoid some of the very negative treatment regimes that are promoted in the United States without thought to the patient's health or their lifestyle. Originally, I took a routine physical and discovered that I had a very elevated PSA. Okay. What happened next was I had some uh, associations with Dr. Moon through other people and I did a blood test, a CAN scan test, and uh, it revealed that I had aggressive prostate cancer. I had a biopsy in the traditional um, sense and uh, my doctor made lots of recommendations to me for treatments that I was not interested in. Uh, my doctor recommended a complete prostatectomy. Uh, he said uh, after that I would need extensive radiation treatments. Okay. That would damage my bladder and my rectum mm -hmm. and I would become incontinent. He could make me a new bladder from my intestines, also a new rectum from my intestines, and uh, I would be totally sexually dysfunctional. He could also insert two um, tubes in my penis, fill them with salt water, and put a valve in my scrotum so that I would be able to have normal sexual function. And uh, so I asked him approximately the cost for that. It was $180,000. Mm -hmm. 
And he said, but not to worry because my insurance company would pay for all of that. And I said, how do you know this? And he said he had already verified that. Okay. So I became somewhat suspicious of that at that point. The next thing I did was contacted Dr. Moon, mm -hmm. um, my uh, primary physician in North Carolina. Um, I, I explained to him the therapies that Dr. Moon offered and he became very interested in that and uh, subsequently made his own investigation and uh, recommended that I go forward with that treatment. I went to South Korea in January of 2011 and uh, I had uh, 15 days of treatments from him there which consisted of IVs, stem cell therapy, cytokine vaccine and uh, some other genetic um, uh, vaccines that, that he prepared. That he prepared. Yes. After, at the end of the 15 days, uh, my PSA initially was 35. Uh -huh. When I when I went to South Korea, when I left there, it was 12.5. Okay. So um, it was on the way down, and um, I was home for three weeks, and then I came to Cabo San Lucas and continued with. Uh, uh, a gentleman by the name of Dr. Serta with the stem cell therapies. Uh, he also did a uh, PSA test and my PSA last month was 2.7. Normal? Normal, yes. Uh, normal for a, a male my age is between one and four. Okay. And uh, so that's in the normal range, which would suggest that the cancer is in remission and that the problem is diminishing rather than intensifying. Uh, the fact that it's very informative, very user-friendly, it's very easy to take your treatments. Um, uh, Dr. Serta and his staff have an incredibly good bedside manner. They're very user-friendly and um, whatever questions you have, and people have lots of questions with their treatments, things that they think of, and he, uh, he and his staff, you seem like you're the only person that they're treating. It's very, uh, it's very refreshing, and it's very comforting to have that uh, ability to, to understand what's going on with your own body. I would. I definitely would do that and I would say to do a lot of investigation because the traditional medical community, especially in the United States, is driven by one thing and that's money. And I think people have lost sight of their ability and their commitment to try to help people find a cure. So many people are caught up in the mainstream of how much money can we make from this and from my perspective, they can't pronounce the word cure. It's not in their vocabulary. Had pains in the upper, real upper stomach right below the sternum. And I was going through some court battles uh, back in New Orleans. I thought I had ulcers. And probably after about six weeks, it got so bad I had to go to the emergency room and spend a half a day. and. Uh, Everything checked out except the CAT scan, and the doctor came in and said he had bad news. And uh, so he said I had cancer, and I needed to see an oncologist immediately. So I went to the oncologist, uh, diagnosed last March with late stage four pancreatic cancer, metastasized to the lymph nodes and to the liver. Gave me 90 days to live. Well, I was trying to get into MD Anderson, and uh, during that process, I met uh, a woman at a, at a Kentucky Derby party in Destin that knew Delise Dearman, and she said that Delise had just gotten back from Korea and uh, explained to me about Dr. Moon's uh, clinic in Korea and said, would you like her phone number? And I said, certainly. So I called the lease the next day. Four days later, I was on an airplane heading to South Korea, not realizing where I was going or what I was going to do, and thought I'd never come back. And, uh, and uh, thank God and Dr. Moon and what you guys do here in Cabo for follow-up. I'm still alive and never felt better. When I got to Korea, I was in severe pain on the way over, and I was on all kind of 
pain medications, oxycodone and, and oxycodone and uh, lower tabs and all, nothing worked. I'd take 10, 15, 20 tabs a day, nothing was working. I started, uh, uh, the third day you're there, you do stem cell harvest. The first two days, I give you shots to st stimulate the growth of the stem cell uh, in your blood. Third day, they harvest. Uh, Ten days after I started stem cell therapy, the pain went away. I mean, uh, just amazingly went away. And so I knew things were going to get better. And then, um, of course, you have CAT scans and all that uh, measures the size of the tumor. And you do follow up with the CAT scans to see if the tumor is getting bigger, getting smaller. And I also had six days of what they call CyberKnife surgery, which is laser surgery, robotic laser surgery. And uh, that gnaws away also at the, at the cancer. Uh, anyway, after I stayed four months, at, when I left, my tumor was less than 50% the size it was when I got there, the mass size of the tumor, less than 50%. And uh, still working each time I do a CAT scan, did one a couple of weeks ago, and it's still getting a little bit smaller uh, in the pancreas. I was there four months the first time, but I went back for two more trips. Uh, and the last time I was there was two months ago, which was February and March, uh, middle of March. And uh, I harvested enough stem cells to last a year, so I don't have to go back hopefully for a year or two you guys get stem cell harvested here in Cabo. He says it's going very well. When I first got there, when he diagnosed me after reading over all the literature that I had uh, sent him and took to him, he, he uh, said that I'd live at least two years longer. Well, that was way better than 90 days that they gave me. And uh, so he said, but you could live much longer if you do the follow-up therapy, and that's why I'm coming here. So, I mean, I'm over a year into it and feel great. So uh, it's, it's getting better and better. He's gotten a little more aggressive because uh, the chemo has a tendency, uh, your, your, uh, your uh, tumor has a tendency to get immune to the chemo that you're on regimen, uh, you know, after about six or eight months, which mine did. So I went back to Korea and had a, had a port put in the, uh, the, the uh, groin that uh, implanted a tube into that main artery that goes directly to the uh, pancreas and to the uh, liver in order to uh, put the, the chemo and the killer gene drug directly to the point of the cancer instead of through the vein with a regular IV. So it's quite a bit more aggressive, but I'm on four chemos, uh, always been on four chemos, really five when you count the one I'm doing here, the cisplatin, and uh, it's all working. Well, I, I've, I've always, uh, when I left Korea, I felt good. And I, I think the condition's roughly the same. After this last uh, chemo change in Korea, I lost my hair again for the second time and lost a lot of weight, but that's coming back now. Uh, it's been a couple of months and uh, it's all good. It's all good. I feel great. I've, I have a lot of energy. Uh, I just I feel really good. Yes, yeah, most definitely. It's very convenient for Americans to come here, which was becoming a larger segment of his business in Korea. Going to Korea is very difficult. Uh, like for me,